In this installment, we will explore the disturbing story of Patrice Allegra, an infamous serial killer who spread terror in France during the 1990s. Patrice Allegra, an apparently ordinary man, hid a dark side that led him to commit a series of brutal crimes. With his deceptive appearance and his ability to evade justice, he became a real nightmare for society. Join us as we unravel the chilling details of his murder, his modus operandi, and the shocking events that led to his capture and conviction. Get ready to explore the twisted mind of a serial killer and immerse yourself in the intricate web of crimes he left behind. Warning, the following scenes may contain disturbing material and may not be suitable for all viewers. We invite you to join us on this grim journey into the darkest corners of the human mind as we investigate the case of Patrice Allegra in La Criminotica. Classification, Serial Killer Characteristics, Serial Rapist Number of Victims, Five or More Date of Crime, 1989-1997 Date of Arrest, September 5, 1997 Date of Birth, June 20, 1968 Victim, Valerie Terriot, 22, Laura Martinet, 19, Martin Matias, 29, Mireille Normand, 36, and Isabel Chicheri, 31. Crime Method, Strangulation. Location, Various Locations, France. Status, Sentence to Life Imprisonment on February 21, 2002. The childhood of a serial rapist, son of a policeman, shocks the French. February 14, 2002. The trial against Patrice Allegra, a serial killer accused of five rapes and four deaths, shocks France. Because of the brutality of the crimes, and also because of the intense hatred that the defendant has shown towards his father, a retired riot police officer, called to testify as a witness. If I regret something, it is not having killed him as I told my mother. I would not have done all the evil I did and I would not be here today, he assured in the presence of his father. He lies, as always, he yelled when his mother declared that he loved him despite the fact that he has never visited her in jail. The turbulent story between father and son is just one more detail in a story full of violence and sleaze. A father with problems with alcohol and a tendency to solve difficulties with blows, who was forced by his work to spend long periods of time away from home. His mother, a pregnant woman despite herself, a young alcoholic with a wide collection of lovers. Between the two, Patrice, who soon strayed from the right path despite the corrections of his father, who covered up the first outrages of his son, compensating even the victims of the robberies, to avoid him going through the courts. The father claimed to feel ashamed of the suffering that his son has inflicted on the families of the victims. Without ruling out that he may have some responsibility for Patrice's behavior, he denied being a drunk or having hit him systematically. He was no more violent than any parent here, he said, later acknowledging that when the defendant was 11 or 12 years old, he hit him on the head with a stick because he felt totally powerless. He also insisted that although he and her wife were not a typical couple, he did not hit her. He only once pointed a rifle at her when he surprised her in the company of a lover of hers. The mother defined the father of her children as a very violent man who hit Patrice when he did nonsense. Unfortunately, the events that are being tried these days in the French town of Toulouse go far beyond the family drama at the Allegra home. According to the indictment, Patrice raped and murdered four women between 1989 and 1997. A former mayor of Toulouse, involved in orgies. May 20, 2003. The president of the French Higher Audiovisual Council, CSA, Dominique Bodies, denounced on Sunday that he was the object of a frightful machination after having been involved by a prostitute in sadomasochistic orgies with minors. It was the same Bodies, former mayor of Toulouse, who revealed that he had been summoned in the open proceedings against the multiple murderer Patrice Allegra, who is accused of organizing parties for a group of notables. 
The former mayor took the lead and, before the Toulouse press published the prostitute statements, he issued a statement and spoke live on the TF1 news program to deny the accusations. Bodies explained that, according to a prostitute named Patricia, he had been 10 years ago, at the center of the organization of sadomasochistic evenings, with rapes of minors, barbaric acts and cocaine trafficking. Bodies, who said he was willing to cooperate fully with justice, pointed out that this situation is the response to his decision, adopted last July, not to allow the broadcast of pornography on television. Apparently, this was said by the former mayor of Toulouse, it must bother people with great interests. The judicial summary in which these accusations appear is the one opened against Patrice Allegra, sentenced to life imprisonment for five murders. Currently, Allegra is the subject of a new judicial investigation for rape, pimping, torture and barbaric acts. Three prostitutes accuse him of being the organizer of the evenings, in which personalities from Toulouse's high society allegedly participated. The investigation also talks about Magistrate Marc Bereg, who is said to have protected criminal activities in Allegra. Bereg is currently Deputy Prosecutor in Montauban and has categorically denied the statements of the prostitutes whom he described as grotesque. Scandal in France over the attendance of public figures at sadomasochistic orgies. Wednesday, May 28, 2003. The chief prosecutor of the Toulouse Court of Appeals has been dismissed, the sessions included rape of minors, torture, prostitutes and drugs. The suspicion that a group of public figures from Toulouse participated in sadomasochism sessions organized by a multiple murderer has led the government to replace the head of the prosecutors of the Court of Appeal of that southern French city. The Council of Ministers appointed the prosecutor of Cretile, on the outskirts of Paris, Michel Barral, substitute for Jean Wolf, who has been accused by prostitutes of having frequented those sessions, in which minors participated. The Minister of Justice, Dominique Perben, explained that he has taken this decision after the reports presented by a judicial inspection mission of his services that he was last week in Toulouse. I want the necessary relationships of trust to exist so that the proper functioning of the jurisdictions are restored in Toulouse and that it be clear that the magistrates are dedicated, honest people who are convinced of the importance of their task," Perben told reporters. As other magistrates have done in recent days, Wolf revealed that a prostitute had implicated him in the matter of sadomasochistic sessions. In an interview with a regional newspaper, Wolf, 65, denied these accusations and pointed out that he had asked per Ben to replace him in his position, since he was in an untenable situation to continue exercising the functions of he. On the 15th, the Toulouse prosecutor's office opened an investigation against the multiple murderer, Patrice Allegra and others, for pimping in an organized gang, aggravated rapes and complicity, torture and barbaric acts and rapes of minors by persons repository of public authority. This case took a spectacular turn on the 18th, when the president of the French Higher Audiovisual Council and former mayor of Toulouse, Dominique Bodies, himself asked to appear before the cameras of the most watched newscast in France to reveal the accusations against he. It is a terrifying machination, Bodies said, commenting that his name was quoted by former sex workers in the Allegra investigation. The former prostitutes say that Allegra, involved in pimping, had police and judicial protection, and they specify that, at the request of the murderer, they participated in sadomasochistic evenings with personalities from the city. According to the statements of these women, Bodies was, 10 years ago in Toulouse, at the center of the organization of sadomasochistic evenings, with rapes of minors, barbaric acts and cocaine trafficking, Bodies explained. He claimed that these mind-boggling accusations are a horrific machination mounted against him and noted that it will be easy for investigators to realize the falseness of the allegations if they check his agenda when he was mayor and deputy of Toulouse. After pointing out that he will fully cooperate with the courts to unmask those behind the accusations, he recalled that the allegations against him arose since he launched a campaign against pornography on television last July. 
murderer corroborates alleged sadomasochistic evenings in Toulouse. June 1, 2003. Paris, June 1st, EFE Agency. Dot, the scandal of the supposed organization of sadomasochistic evenings in Toulouse in which politicians, magistrates and police from this southern French city would have participated today took a new turn when they were corroborated by the alleged organizer, a serial killer sentenced to life in prison. In a letter sent to the presenter of a Canal Plus television program, the murderer, Patrice Allegra, also admits to being the author of the death of a prostitute and a transvestite, who was allegedly eliminated at the request of two personalities from Toulouse due to that he was an annoying witness. These orgies, organized in the early 1990s, frequently degenerated into violence, according to Allegra, thus confirming the version of two former prostitutes on whose statements the judges have relied to open two parallel judicial investigations, on December 15. May. One refers to the murder of Claude Martinez, a transvestite who would have filmed the sadomasochistic evenings, and the prostitute Line Galbardi, in 1992, whose investigations had been archived in the past. The other summary against, Patrice Allegra and others, was open for, pimping in an organized gang, aggravated rapes and complicity, torture and barbaric acts and rapes of minors by persons holding public authority. Last Friday and at his own request, Allegra gave a statement before the investigating magistrate of these summaries, something unprecedented in the behavior of this serial killer. According to sources close to the investigation, Allegra stated that it was the former mayor of Toulouse and current president of the Superior Audiovisual Council, CSA, Dominique Bodies, and others who commissioned him to make Martinez shut up and recover the videos. As for Galbardi, Allegra affirms that he killed her in front of a police officer who would have commissioned her murder. As soon as he learned the new details, Body's lawyer, Francis Spiner, denounced at a press conference a machination against his client, who, he said, wants to be prosecuted to have access to the summary and to be able to defend himself against slander. Spiner recalled that Allegra is sentenced to life imprisonment and, he can say what he wants because he is no longer at risk. Bodies was also cited by the two former prostitutes, Patricia and Fanny, Galbardi's companions, in the summary on the alleged sadomasochistic evenings, a fact that he himself recently made public on a primetime newscast, and then he denounced being a victim of a plot by the pornographic industry. From his CSA post, Bodies had launched a campaign against pornographic movies on television. Spiner alluded today to a dispute between a union of municipal employees and Bodies, mayor of Toulouse from 1983 to 2001. Bodies sued them for diverting funds from the castle of Arba's vacation center, mentioned as the supposed place of the sadomasochistic evenings. Three Toulouse magistrates also announced to the press that they have been summoned by the two former prostitutes, but they deny the accusations. Allegra was sentenced in February 2002 to life imprisonment, accompanied by a security period of 22 years, for the murder of five women between 1989 and 1997. He has since been prosecuted for six other crimes, including those of Galbardi and Martinez. They find a house that hosted violent orgies in Toulouse. The sadomasochistic evenings were supposedly organized by a serial killer and frequented by notables in the early 90s the police have found the house where sadomasochistic evenings were supposedly held organized by a serial killer and apparently frequented by notables from Toulouse, in the south of France. Based on the stories and descriptions of two former prostitutes, Patricia and Fanny, the gendarmes have located Noah's Lake House, 20 kilometers from Toulouse, the scene of allegedly violent orgies in the early 1990s. The 1990s, according to the evening newspaper Le Monde. Fanny, claimed to have seen tied to the walls of a room, called the chapel and located in the tower of the house, under 12 or 13 years old, while Patricia said that two prostitutes were murdered and their bodies were thrown into the lake behind the house. That house, which was owned by a hotelier in the area, had been left to his father, 
who lived with a prostitute and who recently died at the age of 76 from a skull fracture. His body is going to be exhumed and subjected to an autopsy, according to the newspaper, which also reports that the house has changed owners and they have corroborated the presence of rings in some rooms, which they ripped off, as well as the carpet, because it had dark spots like dried blood. Fanny and the multiple murderer Patrice Allegra, who would have carried the victims in those sadomasochistic evenings, will appear again next Friday before the investigating judge for pimping in an organized gang, aggravated rapes and complicity, torture and barbaric acts and rapes to minors by depository persons of public authority. The conspiracy theory hovers over France. January 2004 in Toulouse, France, a scandal broke out this summer over the possible existence of a group of influential people who allegedly participated in orgies in which rape, also of minors, was carried out, sadomasochistic practices, drug trafficking and human trafficking. White The group would revolve around the figure of Patrice Allegra, a convicted murderer who is awaiting another five trials, in which he is accused of having murdered five prostitutes that he had allegedly recruited for some of these parties. Some high-ranking public officials have been accused in the media of protecting Patrice, who curiously worked at the police station bar for a while. Although these charges have yet to be proven, Toulouse's attorney general has already been sacked by the French justice minister, and a former conservative mayor and three judges, hounded by rumors, have gone on television to plead their innocence. A hundred unsolved disappearances. Meanwhile, police investigators have reopened 115 cases of disappearances of young people, which occurred in the outskirts of Toulouse, between 1986 and 1997. With the reopening of these cases, an attempt is made to investigate the theory that Patrice had received money from influential people and local leaders to provide them with prostitutes and organize orgies in public buildings. This theory had already been raised when Patrice was tried on his first murder charge, but it was not investigated at the time. There are currently three witnesses in the case. They are three young people who allegedly participated in these activities and came to witness some of the murders. Two of the girls have recognized an official from the Toulouse Palace of Justice and a police inspector as members of this possible group of criminals. The Conspiracy Theory Everyone knows conspiracy theories, the assassination of Kennedy or the death of Marilyn are some of the facts about which there are more theses. But apart from famous people, when a normal person disappears or is killed, and the culprit has not been their partner or any other acquaintance, these theories also tend to arise, especially if the victim or disappeared person is a young and pretty girl. In these cases it is quite common for the relatives of the young women to believe in the existence of a plot of important characters who are behind the disappearance or murder. Why do these characters always have to be important? It is said that it is a way of magnifying death to provoke, in this way, the magnification of the victim's own life. From this would derive that frequent refusal to assume that a loved one has been murdered by a deranged beggar or an illiterate quinca, even though there is evidence to confirm it. Among these conspiracy theories, one of the most widespread is the one that is now being investigated in France, the group of important men who entertain themselves by raping, torturing and killing young people. It is hard to believe that in a civilized country one of these groups could exist acting with impunity for a long period of time, without witnesses to give them away, and killing repeatedly without creating social alarm. In order to kill, these groups would have to be protected by police and or politicians and it is very difficult to believe that these professionals hide this type of activity, unless they themselves are active members of the group of sadists, as is being investigated in France. If the thesis of the Toulouse plot is confirmed, perhaps one should begin to believe in the existence of the famous groups of sadistic murderers, because if that can happen in one of the most civilized countries on the planet. Expansion of the case On September 5, 1997, Patrice Allegra, a handsome 32-year-old man from Toulouse, southern France, was arrested in Paris. He has been charged with the rape and murder of six young women, 
between 1989 and 1997, as well as one rape and one attempted murder. He could have killed 15 more people, men and women. He was accused of the murder of his neighbor in 1989 in Toulouse, of his neighbor in 1990 in St. Jeannie's Bellevue, of a prostitute in 1992 and of three women in 1997. He traveled through Belgium, Germany and Spain, where he met his last victim. He killed her in Paris. He was a former nightclub bouncer, had a passion for bodybuilding and was a Don Juan. He was said to be a troubled teenager. He has been in many prisons and detention centers. He has a daughter, born in 1989. He has not yet been tried. His trial is set for November. Patrice Allegra, 33, who is on trial until the end of this month. He is accused of raping and killing five women and raping six more. He is suspected of killing seven other women. He killed in Toulouse, south of France, and in Paris. He may have killed elsewhere in France, but also in Spain, Germany, and Belgium. He may have killed men too. His victims are Valerie Terriot, February 22, 1989, in Toulouse. Laure Martinet, 19 years old, a resident of Toulouse, January 1990. Martine Matias, 29 years old, from Toulouse, February 1997. Mireille Normand, 36, from Verdun. Isabelle Chichery, 31 years old, in Paris, September 1997. Patrice Allegra was arrested the day after this murder. Allegra knew all of his victims. They were neighbors, women he met at the club where he worked, a friend of a friend. They were all dark-haired. He would kill when he was drunk. He wanted to have sex with the women, they refused, he beat them, tied their hands, raped and strangled them. Police said two women committed suicide and were not killed. Valerie Terrio was found almost naked on her bed, with her wrists tied to her head. She had two pieces of underwear in her throat and mouth. Her underwear was torn. There were two glasses in her living room. Martine Matias was found burned in her house. There was blood in the bathroom and on her bra. She was in a strange position, bent over, somewhat sexual. The coroner said there was chloroform in her muscles. The fire started in two separate locations. There was a piece of an automatic pistol in the living room. Twice, the police concluded that it was a suicide. The investigator of the Matias case had a hard time explaining her mistake during the trial. Allegra's father married his mother because she felt pregnant. She was born in June 1968. Her father was a police officer, he was violent, and he wanted his son to live well. Allegra loves his mother very much, who was an alcoholic. They divorced in 1988. When he was a teenager, he was involved in robberies, began smoking joints and drinking. At 17, he tried to strangle his girlfriend. His father, during the trial, said that he was not violent but simply stern, and that he had never hit anyone. Allegra replied, he's lying, as always. I only have one regret, I didn't kill him even though I promised my mother I would. I wouldn't have done all the evil I did. And I don't love him. Allegra is handsome, likable and intelligent, but he is also cynical, selfish, perverted and unapologetic. He has a daughter, born in 1989, from a woman he separated from her in 1995, because she was fed up with him being drunk all day and hitting her. Allegra could receive life in prison. His life, he was born on June 20, 1968 in Hotgaran, to a CRS father and a hairdresser mother. His father is very strict and violent, with Patrice and his mother, and his mother, alcoholic, buys her son's silence to hide his extramarital games. Only his paternal grandmother takes good care of him, she dies in April 2001. During his trial, Patrice Allegra, 
known as his parents, declared, I love my mother, I hate my father. My father did not raise me, he abandoned me. He was a poor student, he repeated his preparatory course, his sixth grade and his fifth grade, and he failed to obtain his CAPE, Certificate of Professional Aptitude for Teaching. Adolescent, he falls into petty crime, car escape, robbery and cannabis trafficking. His father, to save face, protects him from the rays of justice. But after a certain time, her father entrusts her to a juvenile judge, Patrice is admitted to a reform school, from where she flees to take refuge with her grandmother. In 1984, from the age of 16, he knows his first trials. At the same time that he begins to carry out his first attacks, he tries to strangle his girlfriend at the time of a dance. Thanks to his father, he gets a young job as a waiter at the Toulouse police station. But he is sentenced to two recoveries for gun violence and rebellion. Then come the occasional jobs, club doorman, doorman. The older he gets, the more he becomes violent. From 1988 to 1995 Patrice Allegra lives with Cecile C., with whom he has a little girl Anais. In 1994, Cecile C. alerted the police several times for aggravated assault. He remains in prison for the first time, for violence with a weapon. But at that time he had already killed two times. Cecile C., during the trial, declares, she didn't work, she drank, she smoked. Then she broke everything in the house and hit me. She excused herself, crying. I felt sorry for her unhappy childhood. I later understood that she controlled me, from time to time she disappeared for one night, two or three days, and he returned without saying anything where he was going. Adolescent, he falls into juvenile delinquency, car theft, home invasion and cannabis trafficking. His father, to keep up his appearances, protects him from the rays of justice. But after a while, his father hands him over to a juvenile judge, and Patrice is sent to a reform school, from which he flees to take refuge in his grandmother's house. In 1984, at the age of 16, he had his first convictions. At the same time, he begins committing his first assaults, attempting to strangle his girlfriend during a dance. Thanks to his father, he gets a job as a waiter at the Toulouse police station. But he is sentenced to two penalties for gun violence and rebellion. Then come the occasional jobs, club doorman, bodyguard. The older he gets, the more violent he becomes. From 1988 to 1995, Patrice Allegra lives with Cecile C., with whom he has a little girl named Anais. In 1994, Cecile C. alerted the police several times for aggravated assault. She goes to jail for the first time for gun violence. But at that time, she had already killed two times, see more. Cecile C., during the trial, declares, she did not work, she drank, she smoked. Then she destroyed everything in the house and beat me. She apologized, crying. She pitied me for her unhappy childhood. Later I understood that she manipulated me. From time to time, he would disappear for a night, two or three days, and return without saying where he had been. Monday, June 2, 2003. Veteran French politician Dominique Bodies has challenged judges to investigate allegations that he was involved in sadomasochistic orgies organized by a convicted serial killer. Mr. Bodies, who heads France's media regulator, the CSA, strongly denies the allegations and says he is facing a political vendetta. His challenge follows reports that convicted murderer Patrice Allegra has accused Mr. Bodies of being involved in orgies. Two prostitutes have already made the same accusation. Allegra, who appeared before magistrates over the weekend, also confessed to the murder of two other people, a prostitute and a transvestite, in addition to the five he is known to have killed. He said he carried out the killings on the instructions of public figures, who feared that the transvestite would reveal photos taken with a hidden camera and that the prostitute would not keep silent. 
The orgies are alleged to have taken place in Toulouse, when Mr. Bodies was mayor of the city. One city official, Chief Prosecutor Jean Wolf, resigned over the scandal last week. Mr. Wolf said he had been mentioned in a prostitute's testimony to police, but described his story as totally implausible. Revenge Mr. Bodies, an influential figure in the ruling center-right UMP party, has led a vocal campaign to ban hardcore pornography on television for the past year. The former mayor says he believes elements of the porn industry may be spreading orgy stories to get back at him for the campaign. He has requested that he be subjected to a judicial investigation so that his lawyer can have access to the evidence against him. It is unacceptable that a man's honor can be sullied by the words of a murderer serving a life sentence and two prostitutes, Mr. Body's lawyer Francis Spiner told the Liberation newspaper. When asked why his client had made the unusual decision to ask for a judicial investigation, Mr. Spiner said it was the only way to fight defamators on an equal footing. Being subjected to judicial investigation is a step that does not amount to a criminal accusation, but implies that there are reasonable indications. Cocaine For his part, Allegra said that he wanted the truth to be known. I cannot accept suppressing the truth because the people involved are people in power, he wrote in a letter secretly sent from prison and published in the French press on Monday. The two prostitutes are telling the truth when they say that they went to sadomasochistic parties with me, and that certain members of the Toulouse bourgeoisie were there, and they were all going for cocaine, Allegra wrote. Allegra was sentenced to life in prison in 2002 for six rapes and five murders. He is also being investigated in connection with a criminal ring in Toulouse that is said to involve minors and cocaine. Orgy's scandal shakes confidence in France. Wednesday, July 9, 2003. For the past two months, France has been gripped by a sinister tale of sadomasochistic sex, drugs, and murder in the southern city of Toulouse. The allegations are that top city officials not only covered up for an imprisoned serial killer, Patrice Allegra, but even ordered some of his murders to protect themselves from blackmail after attending his sadomasochistic orgies. But in the latest twist, one of those officials has cleared his name by facing his accusers in court. The whole affair began in 1997, when a special homicide team began investigating the unexplained disappearance of 115 women and girls in the Toulouse region dating back to 1992. As a result of the investigation, serial killer Patrice Allegra was sentenced to life in prison in February 2002 for six counts of rape and five murders. But this summer, from his prison cell, he began responding to new allegations made by two former Toulouse prostitutes, known as Fanny and Patricia, in ongoing investigations into other unsolved murders. On French television, Patricia's voice and appearance were heavily disguised as she repeated her testimony to the police. She claimed that Toulouse magistrates and high-ranking politicians had attended sadomasochistic orgies partly organized by Allegra at a castle owned by the council. Patricia also alleged that she and Fanny witnessed Patrice Allegra kill two other prostitutes. In turn, in a letter to a French television program, Allegra confessed to the murders, but claimed that they were ordered by city officials to cover up his participation in the orgies. Even more bizarrely, Patricia and Allegra hinted that the French head of broadcasting standards and anti-porn campaign advocate Dominique Bodies was involved in his sex ring while mayor of Toulouse. Keep the look. It's a claim he has strenuously denied all along, saying the porn industry was trying to get revenge by tarnishing his name. So Mr. Bodies demanded to go to trial to face Patricia face to face before a judge and see if she could repeat her accusations while she looked into her eyes. She couldn't do it, and he walked out of court with her name clear. The accusations made against me are nothing but lies, he told the media when he left the court. I looked my accuser in the eye and she could not meet my gaze. My accuser arrived escorted by two gendarmes, and she leaves with two gendarmes. I came here as a free man, and I am leaving as a free man. 
Patricia could now be put on trial for perjury over the allegations against Mr. Bodies, who has vowed to continue the fight against those who wrongly accused him. He also blamed Toulouse's local newspaper, La Depeche du Midi, for causing trouble. However, the newspaper defends his revelations about other top officials in Toulouse. One judge was removed from the case, while another was found to have gone out drinking with the serial killer, who is the son of a local police officer and used to work at the police canteen. He, too, has accused the Toulouse police of a cover-up. They classified some of the serial killer's murders of local prostitutes as suicides, despite strong evidence to the contrary. The editor of La Depeche du Midi, Jean-Christophe Giesbert, says that the city authorities have hardly fared well. We want to know why it seems that the investigation has stopped or not progressed. There are still many people who need to be questioned by the judges, but that is not happening, why not? We have the impression that the authorities are anxious to drop it. Divided Opinion In the cafes of Toulouse, the scandal has divided public opinion. A young student is convinced that Dominique Bodies was the victim of a conspiracy against him. He was a good mayor and he is a good man. He never did those things he was accused of, sexual things, not in Toulouse. But others believe that local authorities failed in Allegra's case, catching him too late, and suspect that something strange may have happened on council properties, which has yet to be adequately explained. I think most people here are disgusted with the system, and many of us believe that we may never know the full truth of what happened, says a young Toulouse woman. For most of France, the story has been little more than morbid over morning coffee. But for the people of Toulouse, the revelations have shaken their faith in their politicians, the police, and the justice system. Whatever revelations are yet to come, the damage will take a long time to repair. Dear viewers of La Criminotica, In this video, we've explored the story of a disturbing serial killer and delved into the darkest corners of the human mind. We want to thank you for your continued tuning in and support throughout this exciting journey. We are glad to know that La Criminotica has been well received and that our stories have been of interest to you. We thank all our subscribers and followers in Spain for joining us in each installment. For those viewers in South America, especially our fans in Mexico, we want to express our gratitude for your enthusiasm and participation. We are glad to know that our stories have also reached their audience in different parts of the world. We take this opportunity to wish you all a wonderful summer, full of memorable and safe moments. We will continue to bring you more intriguing stories in future installments. Thank you for being part of La Criminotica. Have a great summer.